Okay. <clears throat> Yesterday morning on September 8th, Orlando Police Department responded to the 4600 block of Gardens Park Boulevard. It's a Navy Orlando Federal Credit Union. Um, at approximately 8.53 hours. We received a call of a shooting outside of the uh, business. Upon arrival, patrol officers found the victim, Barbara Tommy, who uh, had suffered uh, several gunshot wounds. EMTs arrived at the scene and began life-saving measures and transported to RMC, which was pronounced dead. Uh, Tommy was an employee of the Navy Federal Credit Union and we later learned that it was a domestic situation where she was shot and killed by her husband, Sylvester Ofori. A search warrant was served at the residence that they shared, and the suspect was located and taken into custody. So he is now at uh, jail here in Orange County. What can you tell us about when he was taken into custody? Did he go peacefully? Uh, were there any incidents? There, there was no resistance. I'm going to turn it over to our lead detective, Detective Matt Rogers, and he can answer any kind of uh, questions that he has as far as the investigation goes. Okay. Good morning. I'm Detective Matthew Rogers for Orlando Homicide. Um, as far as your question, ma'am, um, I hesitate to give that sort of information out just to protect the integrity of my case since it's an ongoing investigation. Even though there's already been an arrest made, the investigation is still very much active. And uh, I want to protect anything and everything I can in preparation for trial. Did he was arrested before? Uh, that I'm not sure of. Uh, if he was arrested prior, I understand that he uh, he has been in the Central Florida area for approximately 20 years. Were there any previous a delay between eight something in the morning and arresting him much like later in the evening? So the delay is obviously there's a lot of investigative work that goes into this sort of investigation. Uh, there's a lot of testimony that is needed to obtain from witnesses and things of that nature. Um, we have to make sure that our testimony that we receive and our investigation is pretty solid when we're going after an individual responsible for this sort of crime. Um, and so these things take time. Um, we have to deal with the scene, and we have to deal with other units, the apprehension efforts, and then obviously uh, coordinating with other uh, teams like our SWAT team to, uh, to affect this, this search warrant. So it takes a great deal of time. Did you know where he was the whole time? I'm sorry? Did you know where he was the whole time? We we had reason to believe that he was at his residence, yes. Now, yesterday, Chief Malone mentioned that there was uh, several security cameras that caught the incident uh, in its entirety. Uh, will that video be made public at all? Uh, will it be made available to us? That decision is going to be well above my head and my pay grade, unfortunately. Um, I would imagine you would want to direct that to Lieutenant Chisari. Um, there was surveillance footage at the bank at the time. Um, and we do have, we are, we are in possession of that footage. The lieutenant had mentioned that they had a shared residence, we had heard that, that she had left him. Do you know what kind of played into yesterday's drama? Sure, as far as I will say, um, they did have an apartment that they lived together at. They were currently married. Um, they were going through a divorce and they were estranged for approximately three months. That's the most that I'll get as far as that goes. So she wasn't or wasn't still living? She was not currently living with him, although she still had rights to the residence. Was her apartment that they shared. And any idea what led up to yesterday morning's incident? I, I, I hesitate to give that sort of information just as far as a motive goes, just I want to protect the, the integrity of my investigation. Were there any previous calls to service at that apartment? Uh, that I'm unsure. We're still looking into that. A lot of my investigation yesterday was uh, identifying our suspect definitively and then focusing on the apprehension, the background story, and the, the previous uh, dealings with them, be it through our calls for service, should there have been any. Um, or any previous uh, incidents between them will be uh, identified at, at a later time. He was waiting for her at the parking lot. That I, I hesitate to release. I just oh. I don't want to I don't want to release that just yet. That's that's sort of case specific information that I want to keep to myself and is very very important to keep close. So to clarify, are you saying that uh, that OPG doesn't know if it, whether or not there was a history of, of uh, domestic violence between the couple, or is it that? No, I'm not saying that. Just right now, we're we're just not releasing the additional. Information. Okay. You did find a previous arrest in 2016 after an altercation between the husband and wife. Anything you, you can speak on about that? I, I can't comment on that. I, I don't have specific knowledge of that incident. Was there a, an injunction between the two? No, to my knowledge, it was not an injunction. Do you have to send in the SWAT team or did he surrender peacefully? He surrendered peacefully, but due to the nature of the, uh, the charges here at this particular 
uh, investigation, we did utilize our SWAT team. They have kids together? I'm sorry? They don't have kids? No, no children. No children? Okay. No. Is the suspect still any remorse for what he's accused of? Uh, that I, I don't want to get into as well. I want to protect that um, simply because he ha he'll have his day in court as well, and I don't want to taint any possible jury pool coming to a prosecution phase of this investigation. Has he been cooperating with the investigation? He was cooperative with us, yes. Throughout the day or just at night? When we made contact with him, he was cooperative with us. We did see some family members uh, show up at the scene yesterday. Um, obviously, they were distraught. How did they uh, deal with the news of well, uh, I have been in contact with the family. She does have uh, extended family here in the United States, and she has family uh, abroad. Um, her family was understandably very shaken and uh, distraught. Um, I've been in contact with them throughout my investigation to provide them updates, and I also uh, informed them of our arrest. They should have been and were the first people to know that. Um, they are dealing with it as best they can, um, and we are here to help them in any way possible to, to provide some sort of closure in this incident. Now, in speaking with them, were they in fear of their lives at any point? Uh, that I'll let them answer. I don't want to speak to how they felt. I really don't know. Um, and I'll let them answer that. So often we see these cases of uh, where there were warning signs that, that something like this could have been prevent, prevented. Were there any warning signs in this case? If, if you, you know, about I, that? I don't want to speculate yeah. on that. Um, what I can say is that someone committed a heinous act of violence towards a loved one um, and there's unfortunately no excuse for that um, there are services out there for people in domestic violence type situations and uh, i hope that they seek those out be it harbor house or, or otherwise uh, men and women alike it makes no difference i just hope that people reach out to the proper resources to get help if they find themselves in a situation like that and hopefully one day we won't have to deal with this anymore the gun legal and registered? I don't want to get into that, I'm sorry. Can you say what weapon was used? It was a handgun. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you folks. Okay.